She's April. And she's Molly. And we are the book besties. <laughs> That's on film. Because Molly's going to somehow not be Molly and get this organized. Spaceship, spaceship. I heard it's spicy. And um, I bought the next two. <laughs> Congratulations, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, That's but... on film. My it's husband, before the clap. It's my before the clap. going to use that, isn't he? Yeah. Only in like the, the <laughs> bonus bleepers. <laughs> Gosh. I had an interesting phone call this week. You did? I had two actually. Okay. What 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 happened? Um I think you know. I I do know. <laughs> Guys, we have some big big motherfucking news. And it's all because I just asked a question. Never hurts to ask. We will be at our first convention. We will be at <laughs> Woohoo! I am so excited. I may cry. I am so proud of us. We will be at the Annapolis Book Festival. It is still going to, it's being worked out where we fall in the schedule, uh -huh. but we will have a full episode from it. And it is on what day? April, April 29th. 29th. So if you are in the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area, you might be able to spot a book bestie. Yeah. In the wild. In the wild. And probably Tom will be coming with us too. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still I'm trying, trying to convince us. him. But I'm like, I don't think we can do this by ourselves. It's a lot of I tech like stuff. But, but basically, here's what we're doing. We're going to be interviewing some of the authors there. I know. It's pretty damn exciting. And, and we're going to live stream... We're going to yeah. live stream from the We're con. Live stream from Facebook and Instagram. So and I'm not, we don't have worked out how much live is going to be going. Right. But we will be live there. At but least there at be... some point. Um, yes. And the interviews with the authors are being filmed and they will be a podcast episode in yeah. May um, because the con is the end of April. And honestly, Molly, since we got the news, this has been me. I know. And every time I talk to Trish, I get a little bit closer to the screaming go. <laughs> Molly, their panels are being moderated by C-SPAN. She called us press the other day. I almost shit myself. It reminds me of that episode from Gilmore <laughs> Girls where Rory is going to give a speech on C-SPAN. And oh, Paris, and like, Paris says, loses her virginity and loses her shit. I didn't get you know into Harvard because I didn't have. I you know who gets into Harvard? Virgins. Virgins. She's going to get into Harvard. Virgins get into Harvard. <laughs> I just like this. That's right, children. Only virgins get into Harvard. <laughs> this like, this like con, when we sent an email to see if they would accept us, it was not what it is now. <laughs> No, no. They were a lot more low-key yeah. um, last year. There are three Pulitzer winners that are going to be at this con. It's their 20-year anniversary. Molly, Pulitzer. I know. And Reese Witherspoon Book Club member. I can't believe that you find that cooler than a Pulitzer. <laughs> because as This is where we a, differ. <laughs> because as an author, I, I want that. I, I mean... Having a Pulitzer would be cool, but I know I'm not that smart. So I know that I, as an author, I know I can get Reese Witherspoon spoon status. I can't get Pulitzer status. I was a journalism major, so. <laughs> I, people that get, it astounds me when I hear somebody gets a Pulitzer Prize. I think it is one of the coolest prizes. Oh, 100%. I, I, I honor that. I mean, I know a lot of people don't, but I see it up there with the Nobel. Oh, like, for sure. I think it's a big honor. I just truly don't see myself as a Pulitzer Prize winner. But I could see myself Molly Biggs author, Reese Witherspoon author. Like, I, that title seems a little bit more copacetic for me than Molly Biggs. My Pulitzer favorite <laughs> My favorite book, To Kill a Mockingbird, won Harper Lee a Pulitzer. Right. I don't write A like Pulitzer! That. There are three of them, Molly! Okay, so anyway, we're going to be at this okay. con in April, May, have an anxiety attack. So. April's not going to have an anxiety attack. Because Molly's going to somehow not be Molly and get this organized. 
She does not believe me. Anyway, so this mm. week, <laughs> what else is going on? Uh, oh, our contest winner. <laughs> Sierra, our winner. Yes. Yeah, so oh the gosh. Zephy, is that? Uh, yes. The Zephy is her uh, handle Zephy? on. Um, Hashtag. Uh, uh, it's at. At the underscore Zephin. Zephy. Oh, I thought it was Zeppin. Oh my gosh. We should be better prepared. Fuck us. I'm zero not prepared. I'm pretty sure it's Zeffy. Oh, I thought I had an N at the end. Um, Maybe I wrote it down wrong. Probably. Zeffy. Zeffy. Anyway, so she entered our contest and we have a new sign-off line, which will be at the end of our outro. So listen listen for that there. But she will be also guest starring on Book Besties. Um, in May, also in May. So we're still waiting it's for a big month now. We went from, yeah, yeah. We're still waiting for her to pick the book, but there's still time for that. So once we have that, um... I haven't asked her either. So oh, I did. In her defense, that's probably my fault. No, I asked her. <laughs> um, but she she said she was going to think about it because she had a few ideas, and she is a pod listener. Cool. And somebody that was my roommate one summer in college. That's pretty cool. At Bowling Green State University. Go Falcons. I'm going to take that away from you. You better not. (laughs) So this week, I am hosting, we are talking about Illuminae. If ADHD and Adderall had a baby, it would not be this book. This book is by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. It is the ADHD freaking nightmare. <laughs> I I was reading it going, I don't think anyone neurodivergent could handle this book. I I guess I am neurodivergent. <laughs> I don't know. I, I couldn't. I was struggling with it. Did it give you anxiety? Oh, I didn't see the cartoon. What cartoon? Page... 153? Well, we have different versions of the book, so it's probably not the same page. Oh, yeah. That is the same page. That's funny. Interesting. Anyway, um, synopsis? Molly synopsis. Give us a synopsis. So I was going to write a synopsis. (laughs) And I couldn't define this book at all right like um yeah is it a romance novel no is it is it a teen drama is it it is a zombie apocalypse yes. book is it a space yes. odyssey what is it what the actual fuck i think it's all of these things sci-fi I, I think i i can't decide they're so, spaceships for once, so it's sci-fi I'm going to read the actual, the the blurb on the back from the authors. I'm very distracted today. This might have been a bad idea. Uh, I am too. I am out of sorts. For for those of you watching, I've moved further away from the wall in preparation for my bookshelves that are going back there. And I'm on a different desk. I'm now on my crafting desk and there's just so much. Things? There's there's just so many things to play with. Welcome to my world. Welcome to my world. I think Tom's going to kill me. (laughs) So. That's okay. Do you want me to read the thing? I guess, but I don't really love that you're doing this. Not because I don't appreciate the struggle in writing a synopsis for this. I totally do. You know, I just feel weird about, like, I know. copyright shit. Right. Okay. Well, th- it's not intended to be a copyright issue if it becomes one. We don't make fun. any money on this podcast. We don't make Nobody's money. paying us to be here. I mean, Hashtag not sponsored. Them. Go ahead and fucking tell them. I don't think they're going to care. Hashtag care. not sponsored. So. Um. Too bad. Okay. The year is 2575 and two mega corporations are at war over a planet that is little more than an ice covered speck. Hmm. Too bad. Nobody thought to warn the people living on it. Yeah. With enemy fire raining down on them, Ezra and Katie have made their escape to evacuate to the evacuating fleet, but their troubles are just beginning. A deadly plague has broken out and no one on the spaceship. Spaceship, spaceship. (laughs) And it's mutating with terrifying results. Your ship's protection is seriously flawed. No one will say what's going on. As Katie hacks into the tangled web of data to find that the truth, it's clear that only one person can help her, Ezra. And that's only problem while 
while that is they split up before that's trouble started, she isn't supposed to be talking to him. A fantastically original heart stopping adventure with everything into fun, dangerous, and seems more. I know that sounded like gibberish. Let's I don't know why question. one of my faces is a frowny face. I don't either. Do you see that? I do. The other ones are happy. They are. I work today. Y'all right there, ADHD? I work today. I know. <laughs> I'm really tired. It was a really long motherfucking week. It was. Also, I read my You were my very son's... quiet in our group chats. I, also, I read my son's... For you to be quiet means it's busy. Yeah. Also, I read my son's IEP before logging in here, so I'm just having a lot yeah. of feelings right now. Yeah. Angry. Well, on this book. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Eliminate. That's okay. Okay. You know, they completely was... left off on the synopsis all the shit about Aiden. Like... Aiden and... Okay. So, I wasn't sure where to start with this book. This is my first question. And it's questions, but I realized our first stop had to be the two authors. We've read dual authors before. Mm-hmm. Royal We, Good Omens, just to name two of them. Mm-hmm. But this reads completely different. Mm-hmm. What do you think of their choices in writing style? Let's start I, there. I could tell it was two authors writing. Oh, 100%. And there it is... wasn't... Like, initially, I figured it was like Amy Kaufman was writing... Um, Katie, thank you. I'm like four books <laughs> ahead. Yeah, you are way ahead. ahead. So. <laughs> you are um, way ahead. I need a smut break, Molly. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> um, so I <laughs> fuck me. Okay, so I thought Amy was writing Katie, and that Jay Kristoff was writing Ezra, but uh-huh. there were definitely times in the middle of Katie's story and vice versa. Ate it. At, Ezra story that I could tell that it wasn't that way. So yeah. they were not writing together. They were writing companion. Yeah. It, it was very like, distracting. So like it feels like if you just like start a page of homework and then hand it over to your classmates yeah. for them to finish. Yeah. And they don't review your crap, they just add to it. So there's a book by um John Green and Hang on, let me Google it. It's okay. called Will Grayson, Will Grayson. Will Grayson. Yeah. And it's by John Green and David Leventhal. Mm-hmm. Leventhal? Leventhal? Levin. I don't know. Um, anyway, they write in dual narrators. Okay. And um, one of them writes Will Grayson and one of them writes Will Grayson. There's two people named Will Grayson. <laughs> okay. And um, it is meant to be two different voices because they are two, two different, different people. people. Right. But I don't think that was the case here. Like, even no. though it's like a mix of a bunch of different characters, I don't think they meant it to read like two different people were writing it. No. And this definitely is where the editor should have came in and been like, hey, this sounds like two different voices. Mm-hmm. We need to smooth this out. Mm-hmm. But I'm wondering if that's part of the intention. You want a more feminine voice for Katie, so the female writer. But it definitely feels like sometimes he's jumping in for Katie's voice Mm -hmm. and she's jumping in for Ezra's voice. Yeah, honestly, to me, that was the worst part of the book was that, was the the two of them writing together. Oh, motherfucker. Now, I can't say that um, I won't read the other ones. I'm not sure, honestly. I, it, I don't think the ending inspired me to, like, need to do it immediately. Um, because it did have an ending. Um, yeah. But I did look up the Goodreads for the next two mm-hmm. to add them to my list. And the next one is about two other characters. And then they come together in the third book. All this four of the characters. Just... So, to oh. me... I can be just done. I can be done with Katie and Ezra's story. Yeah. I mean, honestly, you know what this reads like to me? A prequel. And this I think that's probably book. the point. This one's this is the, the prequel. Book. The next one's also a prequel. They really wanted to write the third book. It's just... But... It was unnecessary. So, when you put this on the list for the pod, I was excited because... So long ago. Huh? <laughs> so long ago. I can't even remember when I put it well, on there. Well, we had season four mapped out, like, the beginning of season three. Like, we were yeah. just ahead. We haven't yeah. even started planning season five yet, and we're no. a month into season four, which is fine. Um, 
But this was on my TBR for the last right. two, three years. So I, when I was at the middle school last year, I was doing a weeding project. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you that don't know what weeding is, that's the very official librarian term for throwing out old books. Um, well, this she yet. No. So <laughs> you have to, I know people have an issue when libraries weed books, but I just want you to keep this in mind. If you want us to buy new books, we have to get rid of the old ones. Word. Um, so I was going through and getting rid of like the ones that were clearly damaged and didn't need Mm -hmm. to be on the shelf anymore. And I pulled this one off the shelf and flipped through it and was like, this is cool. I've never seen a book like this before. Neither have I. And so when you put it on the pot, I was really excited because I liked how the format was so different, but Mm -hmm. I maybe am skipping ahead here, but when I was reading it, I actually texted you and said, I feel like you're going to struggle with this book. First of all, it's so all over the place. It's it like, is all over the place. It's like listening to you talk. Um, yeah. I mean, it is, but you you have good thing. You have a couple of years experience with that. Yeah, that's true. Um, but the other thing is, it doesn't feel like a very accessible book. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the ways that you read as someone with dyslexia is audiobook. Okay, so that's actually my third question. You want to talk about that? Yeah, let's talk about it. Okay, so I'll jump to the third question, then we'll go to the second question. Yeah, no worries. I, I don't remember the, the order of the questions. <laughs> that's okay. I listened to the audiobook, and I believe you read the physical copy? I read the physical book. The audiobook is a full cast reading. Yes. What was your experience like reading this with the pages and the text the way it is? So, um, sorry, go ahead. So, uh, you, no, you go ahead, and then I will talk about the audiobook so tom is actually listening to the audiobook for it right now too mm-hmm. um because he plans to Thanks. do a tom t- take, take on it yeah. um so when i was reading it the mm-hmm. funny thing was when you told me i think that the audiobook is like 11 hours yeah i did really not long. think this book was that long because I can't oh, here, let me see how there long. there are pages that like have hardly any text if they have any text like I mean this is a page in the book towards the end it's just that much text that's it yeah and there are whole pages let's see if I can find an example I did say this that I'm going to do um a video uh on Instagram go to Instagram and I will do a um story 11 hours and 40 minutes okay so i'll do a story on instagram to show off parts of this book but i was shocked to hear that it was that long because like i mean this is another page right there's hardly any text on it that i i really was struggling to understand how to the fuck to read them because you literally follow the 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 flight path of the spaceships and i was like what the actual fuck so i mean I just was really surprised. Yeah, here we go. Here's an example of two yeah. pages that it's you, so pretty, you have though. to read the flight path. And you I was like, what order do you read this in? And so for, for you to say the book was that long, I was shocked because even though it's that yeah. many pages, it did not feel that long to me. And I actually read it really quickly. Um, which I bet it is a quick read with the, with the graphics, which makes it a great book for kids. Yeah, and it is YA. Um, so there is that. It is YA. Um, I, I borrowed it from my library in the young adult section, in the teen section. So we classify it as sci-fi. That's the librarian in me would classify it as sci-fi as well. Um, but I feel like this book is not an accessible book and it's not just because of the audiobook. And I, and I appreciate that they made the, the audiobook a full cast to give it more accessibility, but the way that this book is written, the format, it's just not accessible. I'm actually going to defend the audiobook. Ooh, go ahead. So I don't, everybody knows I am a non-cast, full cast. Oh, you hate reader. it. Although I think I I'm going to make you read Daisy Jones and the Six because that is one of the best audiobooks I've ever read. And you, you liked Evelyn. Five. Yeah. Uh, and um, they're making Daisy Six into a movie. I saw. Maybe we'll do it next season. Yeah. I think it'll be good. Um, so the audiobook is full cast. Mm-hmm. You also get sound effects, music, and like. Do they do pew, 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 pew? Yes. 
you're getting all of it. You got the explosions, the nice. sounds, everything. It was like a live radio show. Okay, so that is pretty fucking it, cool. It was like listening to a TV show. It was enthralling. That's so every cool. once in a while, I did have to pick up the hard copy just to like, like there's there's pages of fucking graphics of yeah. full ships in here. How like, do they do no that? They, who do they? they how do they do those in the audio? They skipped it. Oh, this part where the faces are of the dead. They yeah. started reading names off slowly. Oh my gosh, no! It was so depressing. No, yeah. and like this just. You remember I skipped sitting it. Through the, I was like, okay. You know, you remember sitting through the 9-11 memorial? Mm-hmm. It, it was like that. It was just like this heartbreaking, somber moment. And that's exactly what it felt like. But this, in audiobook, is accessible. Is accessible. So, and I will fight that. So I, I, I like that they did that then. I like that they did that. The full cast. This will be probably be the only full cast I ever enjoy. Oh, you'll like Daisy Jones in the six. I may eat my words for that, but this is the first full cast I truly enjoy. And you'll recognize some of the voices too. See, but I don't like. Because it's like famous actors. What did we just listen to? Where it was a famous person. Karen, not Karen Gillian. What the hell was her name? She did the audiobook for one of. Oh, I don't the know. Midnight Library. The Midnight Library had a famous person on it, and I hated it. Hmm. I, I I didn't I didn't read that one as an audiobook, but you didn't like Good Omens, the, the hmm. and that was David Tennant. Yeah, and um, Michael Sheen. Yeah. So yeah, so you were so wrong, but I was <laughs> wrong, but yeah. So I want to talk about the book itself, the physical copy itself. Mm-hmm. Next, so we've seen. We've seen all the books. April and I have seen all the books. I mean, we haven't seen all the books, but we've seen a good portion of all the books. books. Today, one of my staff was trying to find a good story time read for Black History Month. Mm -hmm. And I was just like naming books off the top of my head (laughs) and naming authors. And he's like, how do you do this? And I'm like, I've been a a children's librarian librarian for a really long time. (laughs) You can't say dumbass. You're a children's librarian. I say dumbass dumbass all the time. It's not to the children, I hope. Sometimes. No comment. Good. Um, <laughs> we've seen all the books, right? They have, they've had maps, text messages, mm-hmm. emails. Mm-hmm. But this book is just All more. of the things? More. It's like all of the things. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's making the book a character in its own self, in my yeah, opinion. I agree. What did you think the book, I mean, the physical book and the contents itself? Like, this is a reading experience, right? Oh, yeah. I've never read anything like this before. And Do you that's think you will why. again? Oh, well, I think I might read the sequels, but not immediately. Like, it'd be a pod break thing. Um, but I, uh, I, I thought it was really cool. I thought it was well mm-hmm. d- done. I thought it was interesting. Um, I liked all the graphic elements of it. I where I struggled was not with like the Mm -hmm. graphic elements although I had difficulty following the flight path Mm -hmm. um I had difficulty when Katie was talking to Aiden because it doesn't have Katie said Aiden said back and forth like that so you just have to remember whose text color is which person yeah and that was a challenge for me which I feel like being the full cast audiobook, you would have gotten that experience where you yeah, knew it, that was very clear. Yeah. So but, because the, the, like well, where they're talking, for example, yes, like backwards, like black. here. So one of them is in white and one of them is in gray. Right. And you just have to remember who was what. And things that gave it away were that Aiden would have things like error, error. And so you would remember, yeah. oh, or like he's the white inappropriate, one. like at caps locking and mm-hmm. weird text fonts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was weird. Um, and especially when Aiden's like glitching out because um, he's lost his damn mind. Yeah, and he he's losing parts of him. Like the zombies are like destroying Carrying him. Apart. So yeah, it's really difficult to follow what's happening, it but is. um. But I really thought that this was innovative. I've never seen anything like this before in a fiction book, I should say. Right. In nonfiction, you often I get those maps and details and things like that. Right. 
Um, well, I mean, but there not are in books fiction. Great for kids, right? Yeah. When you, you see a book like this, usually it's something interactive for kids mm-hmm. in a nonfiction sense. But this like, is I feel like lovely. Well, ha- is this one you're going to pass on to Piper or Liv? I am. Oh, Piper, she's already called Dibs. <laughs> I thought they had to alternate. They do, but um, Liv's in the middle of a coding book, so oh, well, she doesn't want to bother coding. Um, so I want to talk about the Tom's characters gonna next. Kill me. I've moved so much stuff on my desk. I probably made a lot of noise. You all right? I don't think I am. Did we switch places this week? I don't know. It's been a long week. <laughs> Maybe we've body switched. No, we didn't body switch. No. No. Moving on. <laughs> My brain just reset. So let's talk about the characters then. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of damn characters in this book. <laughs> like, I had to look them up. Yeah, right? there are a lot of characters to keep straight, but... Was it as difficult in the hard copy to keep track as it was in the physical copy? No. No. And I'll tell you right, why. physical hard copy. It's audio. I know Sorry. what you meant. I'll tell yeah. you why. Because Katie never interacts with more than one of them at a time. And basically everything is through Katie's lens. Mm-hmm. Like, you get Ezra's side of the story, too. But it's in the context of interacting with Katie. Yeah. Katie's the only one that interacts with everybody. Yeah. And um, there's a couple of scenes where Ezra is interacting with, like, his friends. But uh-huh. it, it doesn't happen very often. And so it was pretty easy to keep everybody straight. That's I did good. get, like, some of Ezra's soldier friends mixed up. Like, I had to be like, who was that again? Because yeah. they were characters that were in, like, one scene and then they were zombies. So. Right. Or, right, the guy, like, the guy in the shuttle bay... Yeah. Where she's like, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, wait, who the fuck is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just, it, it was, I'd say it was about medium difficulty when yeah. it came to the book. Because some of the actors' voices sounded similar. Mm-hmm. So you had to wait for context mm-hmm. before, as they started talking, to get who they were. So, but I also, I, I shared a link in the notes and I can put it in this mm-hmm. thing for anybody. Um, So let's talk about the story, I guess. I mean, we're... 27 minutes in we should do that it's only been 27 minutes it's only been 27 minutes but we're on the sixth question so that's a w i think i'm a bad partner tonight no i've been there girl i've been there i guess we should talk about this story since i've gone six question in first off what do you think this book is is it a zombie book is it human fear is it what's it about so it's fucking all about i don't actually think that they're zombies so I know that they, they have zombies. zombie-esque behavior, but there's, uh-huh. there is a, um, I'll send you the link. There's mm-hmm. a series that you can get on Kindle Unlimited. I do not have Kindle Unlimited, but I bought the books well, long before Kindle Unlimited existed. Uh-huh. And they are called, it's the Born series and mm-hmm. it is by. Like Jason Born? No. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um. Hang on. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. Um, Tara Brown. So it's a post-apocalyptic like survival thing. Mm -hmm. And the, there is a virus that basically turns some of the humans into like flesh eating crazy people. Zombie-ish things. Zombie-ish things. But they're not actually zombies because zombies are dead. Right. They are not dead. They are alive. It's the same in Illuminae. And when they start giving the death toll count Mm -hmm. towards the end when Aiden's calculating that, the zombie people are not dead. They're alive. They're just infected. So they're not zombies. It's like a brain fever. Right. It's like like this fever that takes over and gives them irrational rage. It's like bath salts. It's so wild. It's like bath salts in Florida, man. Um, So basically what happened was this company who is, you know, big boss company full of dickheads. They decide. (laughs) We could go there. Hashtag not sponsored. Um, Clearly never going to be with comments like that. (laughs) Um, So they decide to bomb this smaller planet Right. Um, that's competition of theirs, but not really mm-hmm. competition because it's like Amazon bombing 
uh, your local bookstore. Like it's not right. comparable. It's it's not necessary. Right. So what they bomb them with is actually um, a uh, viral weapon. Right. And so it makes everyone sick and it gives them these zombie-like characteristics and the spread rate is very rapid. Really rapid. Um, like you can't... Ridiculous. Really rapid. And you can't um, you can't fight it. Like there's no cure. No, they just all no. die. Yeah. Um, so basically how this starts is that one of the ships that rescued... So there are three ships that rescue. And this is the part where I got really confused. Mm -hmm. I thought there were two ships that rescued and that I thought so too. And that Ezra's ship was partially blown up. I thought so too. And it wasn't that. There are three I had to ships. Go back. Yeah, I had yeah. to actually look at the maps because yeah. they're all named something very similar and I just had to make Alexander, sure. Alexandria, Hypatia, and Alexandria. Hypatia. Here. They're right here. Alexander, Hypatia, and Oh, here we go. Um, Alexander, Hypatia, Hypatia, and Copernicus. Copernicus. Wasn't Copernicus chasing them, though? No. See, that's where I kept getting confused. So Copernicus is where... Um, that is where... So confusing, this book. That is where... That's the one that gets blown up. Mm -hmm. Alexander is um, where Ezra is. Right. And Hypatia is where Katie is. Katie is. So right. basically what happens is there are three ships that rescue the people off this planet. Right. And one of the ships doesn't quarantine anybody. No, they just and interact loses. with them. And then yeah. that's where the spread starts. And Katie's mom goes to like help with it. Right. And that's when Aiden like loses his fucking mind and decides to blow up one of the ships in the fleet because it was the only way to save everybody is if you eradicate that. Yeah. And I was talking to um, one of my coworkers about the last of us. Is that what it's mm -hmm. called? The new. Yeah. Okay. The, it's a game in a movie. Yeah. It's a, a show. Yeah. TV show. And it was, it's a game too. So she was and telling talking about mushrooms. And all I could think about was that damn Mexican Gothic. Fuck. Have you watched <laughs> it? I haven't actually watched it, but watch the first episode. I'm waiting for man for the second. Part. Okay. Well, I don't think this is a spoiler, but if it is, I'm sorry, because I'm not watching it. But she told me that um, there's, like, an infection and some virologist basically says that you have to bomb this whole town and it happens to be her town. And she's, like, totally fine with it because it's the only yeah. way to, like, stop it. And, like, that's basically what Aiden did. Like, mm -hmm. everyone was like, what the fuck? Why would he bomb a whole ship? Well, he was trying to contain the infection. He's trying to keep people alive, man. I mean, did he do it the right way? No. No. But... <laughs> Was he doing what his programming told him to do? Yes. Yes. Because he's keeping human life alive. Right. That's because stuff. he's a machine. He doesn't have human emotions. Right. He has logic. And we're going to talk more about Aiden. Okay. A little bit more. Okay. Well, um, anyway, the point is, I don't think it's a zombie issue. I so think this is, is a about? space odyssey. I think it's a um, sci-fi story that's wrapped in this whole fucking YA romance nonsense because this book probably came out around the time I mean, that everybody was reading this huge undertone 2015 about, so everybody yeah. was reading YA romance right so I mean honestly though there's this huge undertone though talking about human fear mm -hmm. right it's like as a part of that sto the story mm -hmm. human fear of each other human fear of infection human fear of machines mm -hmm. it is a huge conversation about how we don't trust each other as people you know yeah I, I think that there's something to be said about uh about Katie too. She's a yeah. cliche to me. A million percent. She's that precocious girl who Do you want to talk about them now? I have the next question's actually about Katie and Ezra. Or you wanna talk about Katie? I don't care. <laughs> I can't get comfortable, Molly. I'm regretting my decisions. <laughs> okay. I need a. Do you need oh, a second? Shit! I just totally moved the camera. You're all right. Husband is there you definitely go. You're good. Definitely gonna be like. Okay, the so fuck. let's jump back in. Let's since you want to talk about Katie, let's talk about her first. <laughs> is Katie a heroine? No. Wait. <sighs> because she does save the day. 
She does save oh, Aiden. She does save her boyfriend. She does, a uh, spoiler alert, she saves every, like, a lot of everybody. I, hmm. I struggle with this, and here's why. Okay. It's the same reason that I, people will struggle to say Katniss is a hero. Because what she does is heroic, but it's motivated by saving herself. That's true. I don't think that she is motive. I, I mean, she wants to help Ezra, but I think that she's more motivated in the selfish reasons for helping Ezra, which is that that's. So if Katniss her. is a hero, she's a hero. If Katniss isn't a hero, she isn't a hero. I think that's the argument. They're um, on that same gray line mm-hmm. of hero, not hero. Yeah. The what, main character. What do you this, think? I, I want to say she is, but you're right. I, but then the question is, just, is, Molly, is anybody, was, is anybody ever willing, a hero that isn't self-motivated? No. But she was also willing to die on that ship to save everybody else. She was willing to go down with Aiden. Yeah. Even though she knew she had nobody. I mean, she knew her dad was still alive. And she chose to go, stay on eight. You know, she was willing to die with Aiden on that ship. Um, no, her dad, wasn't her dad dead? No, her dad's stationed somewhere else. Oh, right. Like, she was on that planet with um, her mom and her dad's stationed elsewhere. Like, I no. just, I don't they know. Died, they threw us into this world thinking we already know these people in this place. Mm-hmm. That was, that was, I, I mean, can't story... reach my bell, but ring the bell for me. Like, ding, ding, ding. Like, that is one of my bell ringers right there. It's like, you can't throw us into a world this heavy and assume we know everybody. It, it um... The, because the book is collected in like interview style and reports, we're starting in the middle of the story. It's very frustrating for sure. And the story is told both in past and present tense, and it's kind of a mind fuck. Get, and honestly, get, spoiler alert, it's you get really three narrators. You yeah. get Katie, you get the guy doing the records, and you get Ezra. Yeah. But then mind fuck we find out that katie is actually the person doing the records right and that was surprising to me not surprising to me was that ezra uh his mom was still was the oh i I mean i figured she was the villain i although i gotta be honest with you Mm -hmm. um i don't know if you can see this there is a tag in my book i tagged it uh-huh. I what tagged page? it on page 256, and the reason okay. is because when Aiden reveals that Ezra is dead, 256 is supposed to be the last page that he was actually himself. Right. And Molly, I legit thought he was dead. I, I did, did not too. see him coming back. I did I not did see too. him. I legit I really thought he thought was, dead. was dead. So let's- and I was really surprised that he wasn't. And me being me surprised too. by a book and, doesn't happen very often. You- I don't get surprised either. I no. really thought he was dead. We read a book a week. Right. I was surprised. So let's talk about Katie and Ezra. Yeah. I thought They're the we main were. characters of our book, right? Mm-hmm. They get thrown into action first thing and they are and they truly do not stop till the end of the book. Right. We are action from beginning to end. What do you think of them as leads and their storylines from beginning to end? So if we're going with the uh, Hunger Games comparison, uh, mm-hmm. Ezra is Gale. Oh, yeah. He's um, not PETA. There's no PETA in this there's book. There's no PETA. Unless it's the weird professor guy who teaches her how to code. Ping? I don't know. But he's Gale. He's going to go head first in. I'm surprised that being drafted into the military of that he didn't even want to serve in, that he would go so hard but he does and he likes it and it's sort of that's again like gail right he ends up work like being in district doing something he loves even though he didn't realize it yeah yeah um so to me he's more of a hero than she is because i don't think he's selfishly motivated he has nothing to to fight for anymore well i mean he was hiding that's why he was fighting yeah um i don't know i don't know i their relationship is weird to me like, I get it. We find out. Yeah, we find out through the story that. that, like, the reason they broke up is because he doesn't want to go anywhere. But 
Then they're, they're all of a sudden. My high school boyfriend. He didn't want to go anywhere. But they're <laughs> like, but it's like stupid teen romance <laughs> stuff because they're like, but I still. Love but I mean, him. it's a valid reason to break up with a boy. Yeah. But I honestly, they throw us in to the middle of a teen breakup mm-hmm. in the first chapter. Yeah, and that's their their interviews, right? Yeah, and it's just we're supposed to care, right? But we but don't. We don't. We don't know them. Yeah, we don't. There's no like slowly developing relationship here. They've been in a relationship for a few years. They're broken up and then they still love each other. It's it's like how um it's like how on friends when Rachel comes in, there's a new friend, but we never like really know the backstory right. of the rest of the friends. It's just sort of like they've always been friends. That happens on like every sitcom. It's yeah. how I met your mother, it's the same thing. Like Robin I mean, just shows it. up. I mean, we got a backstory on Big Bang, if that counts. <laughs> we did. And I suppose we did on Friends and on How I Met Your Mother, too, but not yeah. to the same, you know. Extent, yeah. yeah. The I bulk of this book is set on two ships. Sorry, I don't think their relationship was necessary. I just want to say I don't that. either. I don't either. And honestly, they could have been friends. But throwing yeah. us into a huge breakup in the middle of a, like, you could have just said they were exes. We didn't need yeah. to hear this, you know? Well, and I think they were trying to add to some more drama. And I really think their relationship is pandering to teens who are looking for a romance novel, but it's not a romance book. But and it, I think it, it was okay. unnecessary. You can love your fe- friends fiercely enough that you want to save them. Like, if Bro- you or Katie were on in trouble i would want to save you because i love you both I fiercely i know and if i was if i needed bail money or somebody to come meet me at a hospital you guys were the two people i would call i talk about saving you guys and you're like if i need bail money because you know we're not that's the what, same the, we're not it the is same. the same because you know if i need bail it's because i did something terrible to someone that deserved it it's the because same, you know but we're not the same <laughs> um yeah I mean, and and that's that could have been the thing. I don't like yeah. that they had to be love interests. No, no, it's just, and they didn't. Okay, make them love interests. That's fine, but we didn't lean heavy enough into it. We didn't get enough flashbacks. Mm-hmm. We didn't feed that story enough for it to be relevant to the book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it was just unnecessary. Yeah, I agree. So the book is set on two ships. Like that's where our primary right. time is Right, because the other spent. ship is blown up. Right, Alexander and Hypatia. Mm-hmm. They're trying to escape a third ship that's trying to kill them. Right. While this is going on, we have this outbreak. It, if you squint, it kind of looks like a zombie apocalypse, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but this is the bulk of the storyline. Did we need both? Did we need a major corporation trying to kill them and the squinty looks like zombie shit? I say yes, because I think that was the reason that they were trying to kill them. First of all, dropping the bio warfare on them was an experiment. They were trying to see if it would work. When it did work, they need to kill the people that it worked on so no one else finds out about it. However, I do not understand how they were so far behind. It's space. (laughs) Aiden was turned off, so they couldn't use, like, light speed. So they were just, like... Warp speed or whatever. Whatever. They couldn't do that. They couldn't do that. So, like, how... To me, it's, like, slow-moving vessels of traffic. This is, like, when Tom was in vessel traffic. It's the slowest car chase in my life. It's like when Tom was in vessel traffic in Houston and I'd be like, how do boats run into each other? They're fucking big and slow. Like, I don't understand. It's I don't like know, that. but it's ruined several weekends for me. Oh, I know. <laughs> He'd be like, but I don't know either, but they do it all the time. And Usually it's a drunk, drunk captain. It is a very drunk vessel captain who comes to port after leaving the bars. He sleeps in his cabin. He wakes up still drunk. Mm. He thinks the ship will practically drive itself. Then he drives into the port. Then he hits the port mm-hmm. after he hits the port. Then he tries to steer out of the port, mm-hmm. but it accidentally runs into another one. And, and then he's, he's like, trying to go down a canal that goes this way. But and he's, he's just going- doing this sideways, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he's just slamming oil everywhere. And it's, it's just like, it's like that uh, Austin that Powers ne- movie where he's like backing up and he just keeps getting but stuck. That's just, 
Just a just a possible example that's never just happened. Just one yet. example that could potentially have happened, but that's I, I don't. Never I don't before. understand. I didn't how have he... to spend a whole weekend at the sector Houston, very fucking pregnant with a very tiny baby in my belly. Are you okay, Anyways, Molly? I'm who, good. Who hurt you? You know who hurt me. We we <laughs> talked about the VA and the Coast Guard and how they hurt me. It's true. Um. <laughs> anyway. Sorry. Off that soapbox. Um, no, I can stand on it a little bit longer if you desire. <laughs> After the yesterday's text. Whoo. I feel it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, moving on. I'm sorry. Um, I just don't understand how they were still having to chase them. <laughs> I don't get it. It is the small Significantly thing. Was- days behind. <laughs> and, and it's panicked. For days, everybody is chaotic. You would think this happened over hours, but mm-hmm. this was almost a week plus, and you're mm-hmm. like, "No, your general adrenaline cannot be that high for this long. Mm-hmm. Your heart will explode." Mm-hmm. Okay, so Katie gets a mentor in pain. Mm-hmm. He eventually goes mad with the sickness, and he's trying to kill Aiden. Mm-hmm. Right, and and that's he wanted to kill Aiden. Before right. he got the virus. So he actually had enough sense left to, to still do it. Right. But at this point in the book, you you could tell she had to rely on Aiden, right? Right. And that was a really tricky thing for her. So what do you think of this relationship in the book? With her and Ping and then her and Aiden. I think Aiden is her equal. They are mirrors of each other. Um, Aiden, Aiden is... Aiden fell in love with her. I agree. I, I as, as human of emotions as he could have, he and Katie are the same and he yeah. cares for her. Is Aiden a character, would you say? Oh, yeah. But you know what? I was really having a hard time not picturing him as the magenta, like, robot guy from the Avengers. <laughs> What's his name? Um, um, shit. Shit. Jarvis. 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 Yeah, I couldn't not picture Aiden oh, that way. Oh, see, I was more thinking of, like, Knight Rider and, like, the car. Kit. <laughs> Kit. But the other thing is, I kept also picturing, you know, since you brought it up, the woman that's, like, tied up in the mushrooms from... Yeah. Like, that was the other thing I kept picturing. Like, somebody just, like... Just a part of the, the machine. Yeah, it's exactly. I mean, so... Honestly, Aiden is like its own character in this, mm-hmm. even though it's an inanimate object. It, mm-hmm. it, it becomes the primary force that keeps her alive. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's an AI consciousness, so it's not yes. it's not human, it's not animal, but mm-hmm. it um, is a bigger character than some of the actual people. Do you think she it ha- did Aiden have the right to trick Katie? No, it was selfishly motivated. But then again, going back to what we said about him blowing up the other ship, he did it because he was trying to save everyone. And honestly, if he didn't trick her, she wouldn't have came. Mm-hmm. Um, but she kept him alive. So I, I don't know if we're going to, if we would find out in book two, if he was broken or if they fix him. I don't know. But I honestly don't see her correcting what Aiden has turned into. Mm-hmm. I honestly don't see her changing her his code, on, only structuring it better to support what he currently has turned into. I only got three more questions and we're done, I swear. Oh, I was just thinking. That was a good oh. point. <laughs> Ezra, too, is a complex character, we learn. He has a hidden. He's hiding from his mother. Mm-hmm. He nearly dies several times. Mm-hmm. He loses his dad. His family storyline's real complicated. Was any of this necessary? Was Ezra in this storyline at all necessary? Or could we have survived on just Aiden and Katie? I don't... I think you need someone to motivate Katie to come to the other ship. You can't do it with Aiden. Just mom. But... I think mom would have been a fine motivating factor. Mom wasn't there. She right. she, she was on the ship that She was that supposed to be there. Up. Both of them were supposed to be on that ship. I thought she was on the ship that blew up. 
No, she was on. Oh, yeah. She was with the virus infected people on that ship. The ones right. that had been saved right. by Ezra and his crew. Right. So I think the mom is motivation enough. I don't think you need Ezra, but you need no. someone to be the motivation. I think it could have been just as easily Dr. Ping. Right. 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 It's just, it feels like this book needed trimming. I think it's pandering to the YA audience. It needs trimming. This could have sat on a sci-fi shelf by itself. (laughs) Yes. By the end of this book, I feel like we're reading a prequel, which I've already said. Mm -hmm. Not the first book of the series. What do you think? Me? I... I think it's the first book of a series, but the fact that it goes to different characters for the second book, then I feel like, no. Like, why aren't we still following Katie and Ezra? There's a huge gap of time in which we think Ezra's dead to when Mm -hmm. we find out that he's not. And honestly, until we read that second book, we're never going to have a fully formed opinion. Mm -hmm. And this book is... Like many others we've read, I don't know if I like it or I hate it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to have a reread to understand if I like it more. Yeah, well. Do you feel like I've missed anything? No, I don't. I, the thing is that I I had the same issue with this book. I think I liked it and I wasn't sure. So I'm looking at my Goodreads rating right now. Um, so I gave this a three- What was my true rating? 3.5. And what I said was the story is a bit uneven for me, which is why I can't rate it a true four stars. Katie and Ezra are typical teens found in sci-fi drama. This book drags on at parts, but I thought the format was interesting and sometimes distracting. The book is written with codes and pictures and graphics and data entry. I've never really read anything like it. It's definitely original. I also thought that the last hundred or so pages were hella intense. And they were. Like, I was at work reading them and my heart was pounding. I didn't want to stop reading. I will likely read the next two in the series, but not immediately. It didn't leave me in a cliffhanger that I needed to be satisfied. Right. So that was my official review. I just... It left me wanting... It made me feel like this book was incomplete. It was. But it is such a thick book. How can it be so incomplete? I know. And it's not incomplete the way that, like, Let's Use the Hunger Games again is incomplete with the first book. The first book ends on a cliffhanger that you're like, I need to know what happens to them. Right. Um, And that's not the case with this one. It's just sort of like, eh, if I never Eh. read it, it'd be fine. I mean... Don't worry, Piper will read it for us and tell us. <laughs> She's been doing that a lot lately. <laughs> that little baby book bestie, she is doing re- market research. She is reading all the books for us. She is picking them out. We could, she could like, pick it. I know she wants to be a scientist, but if she ever thinks about being a library scientist, I think she. Be I've been trying to convince her that that is where her heart belongs, but she just doesn't want to hear it. Um, she could so be a she- librarian for NASA. They have librarians. I tried to. Um, well, you don't think that at some point they're going to need a librarian in space? Of course they are. They are, because she, she's already promised when she becomes a NASA astronaut, she's going to name the first library on Mars after her mom. What? Yeah. I guess that's okay. But she also made that promise at 10, so we'll see how long that holds up. <laughs> we'll see. All right, let's talk about next week's, uh, next Actually, month's week. Actually, I've got all of next month, if that's okay. Woo! All right, so we are doing romance reads again for the month of February because we did that last year and we had a lot of fun with it. So we just decided to get the good kind of bowling. So um, January 7th, we are reading Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I'm so close to finishing this second book. book, And I finished it yesterday. And it may have inspired my hair a little bit coming up. Oh, are you going purple? I love it. All right, and then on Valentine's Day, Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake, who has a new book coming out soon. She just announced. She just released another one, too. Oh, is that what it was, the one I sent you? Um, Okay, Ashley Doesn't Care. Um, 
Astrid Parker doesn't date, and then there's a new one that just got announced. Yeah, that one I sent you yesterday. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the third book of the season, so February 21st, is going to be Book Lovers by Emily Henry, and I'm so excited for you to read this because I read it over the summer, and it was so good. I, yeah. I, I love Emily Henry. We read heard Book good. Lovers in last summer as part of season three? Something. What season are we in? <laughs> Three, I think. I don't, I don't know. know. And then we are finishing. We are finishing <laughs> the month on February twenty eighth with the fine print by Which was Lauren a Asher, book rack by a Barnes and Noble, books a million, books member. a million. Okay, books let's a million right. in Waldorf. All right, books and, a million Waldorf employee. Thank and you. And I'm listening hearing. to the audiobook for that, and it's making me feel a lot of things. I heard it's spicy. It's very spicy. And I think it's the spiciest book I've ever read. Fifty Shades of Grey doesn't count because the writing was so bad that it was distracting. This is the spiciest book you've ever read. I think so. And um, I bought the next two. <laughs> <laughs> the second book is already out. And the third book actually comes out on the uh, January 31st, which is, I think, the day this episode comes out. Probably. Yeah. I don't know so what day it is. It, today, if you're listening on January 31st, go buy the third you book in the Fine Prince one, series. Like series. I think that's the final one. I think it's just going to be a trilogy. So anyway, um, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> and so is Tom. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations, Thomas. Congratulations. <sighs> and that's it for our week. And that's it. <laughs> Um, we will see you guys next time. Oh, we're your book besties. <laughs> You're so weird. All right. Bye. 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 Thank you for joining us on Book Besties. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The views discussed here are those of Molly and April and not those of anyone else. Today's book was Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. Your book besties are Molly Biggs and April Watkins. Editing by Thomas Watkins. Music is Sleep Sweetly by Prejuda. Don't forget to follow the book besties on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. If you'd like to contact the book besties, please email us at bookbestiespod at gmail.com or our website, www.bookbestiespodcast.com. Until next time, besties, get lost in your favorite book.